the, the pandemic has been probably the greatest uh, challenge to the world since World War II. And if anybody can do their small part to help us get back to normal, it's definitely the primary reason to join. I get the importance of this mission. I understand that at this point, in order to get the pandemic under control, we need to work together to be able to get people vaccinated. And so if I could be a part of that, part of that solution, I wanted to be a part of it. I mean, COVID did a number on all of us. It turned our lives upside down. I have uh, lost family um, because of uh, the virus. So just the importance of like doing something and knowing that I'm going to be a part of the recovery efforts. When this news came out about FEMA asking Peace Corps for assistance with vaccination units, for me it felt like a positive way for the pandemic to have an impact on me and for me to have a positive impact on the pandemic. Peace Corps sends an email in my inbox, I get an email from them and it says there's a three month assignment domestically, could come back now. I still felt like it wasn't finished and there was an opportunity that was perfect for me to finish. Stars aligned. It was affecting so many people that when I saw this opportunity, I wanted, I wanted to take it, I wanted to help. And I just wanted to be able to give back to, to my country and all the people that were suffering through the pandemic in any way I could. I wanted to see where I can use my skills, where I can use things that I learned not only during um, my Peace Corps, but also previously as well, you know, keep on serving during this time. I really wanted to get into the vaccine side of things, knowing that's where the next step was in working towards resolving this pandemic. I had been vaccinated by that time. I had the opportunity uh, the, the resources, uh, but I knew that pe there were people that uh, did not have the resources and, and did not have the opportunity, so I wanted to help with that. It's affected every community around the world as well as all the communities uh, throughout the U.S. We are such a large country, so it unfortunately affected you know every corner of our country. So be being able to be a part of that solution as well as working with FEMA has been incredible and that's exactly why I wanted to join this. It really came about organically. I think there was interest on the part of many people at the agency in seeing how Peace Corps could contribute to a once in a generation humanitarian catastrophe. At the same time, I think you had FEMA who were looking to approach an unprecedented crisis in the most creative fashion possible. Peace Corps was contacted in February, very early on in this new administration, as they were really looking to ramp up vaccination efforts across the United States, and asked how we might be able to support, and particularly recognizing volunteers' unique contributions, their cross-cultural skills, their ability to mobilize people, and their language skills. What the Peace Corps does with all that, and, and how that sort of helps pull all this stuff together, is that we're really working on supporting those state and local efforts that are already going on. And that's what FEMA does really well. We bring in the entire federal government. We coordinate the federal response in support of our state, local, tribal, and territorial partners. This came about as a whole of government effort, an all hands on deck effort. And I think we recognized early on that the Peace Corps had something unique to contribute. We may be a smaller agency. We pack an outsized punch in terms of the value that our volunteers bring to a humanitarian crisis like this. One of the parts that we were most excited about from the Peace Corps side is, is the foundation of the Peace Corps. You know, the foundation of the Peace Corps is not just service and making a difference, but it's also, it's also all about empathy. And our core values at FEMA of compassion, fairness, integrity, and respect are, are mirrors of that. They're all based on a lot of that empathy side of it. So it just seemed like it was a great partnership. We have folks with the same mindset. We have folks that um, have the same desire to serve and to make a difference. And to be able to bring our Peace Corps colleagues into this and serve domestically is just an amazing opportunity. We've gone far with our mass vaccination capability, but now we're really in that engagement side where we're gonna go out there and we're gonna work with communities and close the gap between the vaccinated and the non-vaccinated. And the Peace Corps folks who have come back from all over the world doing engagement with different cultures and different countries are so well suited for this same sort of engagement domestically. That ability to think on your feet, to meet people where they are, to find a commonality, that common human connection that binds us all for the purpose of getting a job done. That's what Peace Corps volunteers bring to the table.
I would say they're kind of fearless, right? They're not ever shy about striking up a conversation with a stranger. And in this assignment, some of them are going door to door and engaging with people that maybe don't have a lot of confidence or have questions about the vaccine. And they're really spending some time with that person and answering their questions and trying to get them the information they need to make the right decision for them and their community. Peace Corps really is that connection point of bringing that education and outreach to the community level. And so when we are now at that point of the pandemic where we're really trying to focus on filling the gap where we see vaccination confidence being low or not having accessibility to the vaccine, that Peace Corps really stood in for that and we're able to then do some calls, do canvassing, really work at that community level. Peace Corps volunteers during their service really learn how to connect with people and to connect across difference, to understand where people are coming from and to meet them where they are. And that has been the most visible contribution that Peace Corps volunteers have made, going out into underserved communities, going out into marginalized communities and understanding why people might be hesitant to get the vaccine and really connecting with them, spending the time. I think one of the immediate things Peace Corps volunteers bring to the table is language skills. Like I, because I speak Spanish, I immediately have that connection with people where um, we can have that relationship where they can feel comfortable because I speak Spanish. So on a daily basis, I've been using my Spanish skills. Um, I'm a native fluent Spanish speaker. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to join this, to help assist with any Latin people, because for me, that was important to help those in need who can't communicate. And I remember the second day, a Colombian guy comes. He looks super nervous, so he's walking, and I noticed it, so I just went up to him and I told him in Spanish, oh, do you need help, necesita ayuda? And then his eyes just like, like just lit up, and he was like, oh, wow, he's like, you speak Spanish? I'm like, yeah. And he instantly told me, like, I thought I was gonna have to do this by myself, not knowing English, coming from Colombia literally three days ago. So he was like, I appreciate the fact that you're here. For me, it kind of reinforced the idea of why I wanted to do this. I think the impact is that people who come to the clinics feel a lot more comfortable and welcome, especially now that we're working with a lot of immigrant communities. I've noticed that people come in looking a little bit nervous. They're intimidated by the sort of bureaucracy of checking in. They're worried if somebody will be able to talk to them and understand them. And they just look so relieved when people talk to them in their own language. Surprisingly, my Swahili came in handy one day. Um, so for one day, I was asked to work with one of the larger mobile vaccination units, actually as a Spanish translator. But out of the corner of my eyes, I see these people wearing what look like East African clothes. And I hear this word that sounds like the word chanjo, which is vaccine in Swahili. So I walked over there and said, hey, sorry, I just heard you talking in what I thought was Swahili. Habarigani, how are you? And they just got these big smiles on their faces um, because they were, in fact, Tanzanians. And Tanzania is the country where I originally served in Peace Corps. So I wouldn't say they needed my translation. You know, their English was fine, but I was thrilled to meet them. And from the smiles on their faces, I think they were happy to hear some Swahili there. We have been servicing a lot of people that originally had a language barrier to being able to get a COVID vaccine somewhere else. Having people with multiple language skills, how beneficial that was. A man came up and he said in his native language, he, he asked if we had someone that spoke that language. And we're like, yeah, sure, of course. We felt so lucky to be able to help him through and make sure he understood the whole process. And then of course we invited his family back, anybody he knew, he was so excited. People from his small community, uh, they, they started coming in after that and it was just a great experience to be a part of. While we have a translation app, talking one-on-one -on -one to someone is so much different. And some of the best interactions I've seen is the volunteers using the languages they were using in Peace Corps. Not only are we really excited to use those languages, but the people we're talking to are really excited that someone's understanding them. And then the other thing is just being flexible. Uh, we joke about the FEMA flexible because that's been a huge Peace Corps theme as well. We try to create plans, especially when we're doing outreach. We try to say, okay, we'll go to this address first, but more often than not, 
those plans aren't, aren't what happens. Uh, you kind of have to show up, so just having that flexibility has been huge. Peace Corps volunteers will always bring flexibility to everything that they do. Um, they even talk about, uh, FEMA talks about FEMA flexibility, which slides right into like our, our Peace Corps skills. And the, the ability to pivot, because some days we come in and something may have changed because of something that's going on in the area where we have our unit, or something has changed with the county, or the county has requested that we have a strike team go out somewhere. Can you go to this grocery store? Can you go out to this festival? Can you, can you go out to this church? So we may find out the day before that, a few days before, sometimes it gets canceled, things like that. So it's always, oh, we can't do this anymore because this is happening right now. We're able to adapt very quickly. The fact that we are very adaptable is a very helpful thing because as we know in the last year with uh, with COVID, things have been changing rapidly. There's always something new, some new information, some new protocol, new guideline, and with this assignment, there have been changes consistently as we've been here. Different directive, different directions we're supposed to go in, things added, things being shifted, and I think because we've had that adaptability from our prior service, it makes it, it has made it easier for us to adjust to all the different things that have come at us and how we approach this project. I think Peace Corps volunteers bring a soft skill. We can sit down and have conversations and connect with people on a personal level, especially when you're talking about vaccinations. It's such a sensitive subject with some people. To be able to sit down with somebody and kind of talk them through that and be able to take the time to do that is really important and I think Peace Corps volunteers bring that aspect to this mission. At least with my Peace Corps experience, I had been doing outreach in Togo, so going house to house in Togo and teaching about malaria and family planning and gender equality, so changing that to COVID in the U.S., it wasn't that big of a leap. As a Peace Corps volunteer, you definitely learn how to talk to people um, that you've never met before. Peace Corps is all about building relationships with the people in your community, getting to know them. That's your entryway into to service and to working with people in the community. And with this assignment, being a little bit fast paced, uh, we don't have you know several months to really get to know people. Um, we kind of have to be able to get headway really quickly. And I think being able to approach someone that you don't know or approach a church or an organization, that's become easier because we had to do a lot of that in Peace Corps. We had to just talk to people, approach people, don't be afraid to, to speak to someone. For all the good that Peace Corps volunteers have done outside of the U.S. and like bringing it home, third goal, but being able to do that kind of work in our home, some of our home states, some of our communities has been extremely impactful. We have this innate ability to see people, to see them when they're at their most vulnerable and be able to like lend out a helping hand and say, like, we're gonna be able to take care of you. I think that's something that Peace Corps volunteers are very, very good at. And I think there's also a certain amount of patience and respect that Peace Corps volunteers bring, not only to like their Peace Corps service, but I think kind of in everything that they do. We're coming into these communities, we may be seen as strangers at first, and they may not trust us at first, but we're very, very good at building a quick rapport with members of the communities where we are, and that comes from our, our training in Peace Corps. Sometimes, you know, when you first get to a place, or if you're focused on your mission, that's what you think about. You know, where can I go in, and where can I set up, where can I have the biggest impact? Being a Peace Corps volunteer, we go in first looking at the community at large. As we think about how we integrate it into our communities overseas, it's the same way as integrating into a new community, a new city, a new town here in the United States. So I personally hit up the local coffee shops. I just walk around and I start to introduce myself and speak to locals, speak to the community members. Knowing that if we are able to integrate into the community and have people know, oh, we're here and we will be here, they won't think of us as, you know, like a passing salesman just giving out information. And so one thing that my partner and I would do is we would eat at the same restaurant every week and get to know the locals, especially the wait staff. And they have been providing us with a lot of information. So just having that skill set to be able to integrate with the community pretty fast. Just sometimes an interaction, just a basic interaction uh, between two people just asking somebody or giving somebody the information 
I think really makes a difference and a Peace Corps volunteer is willing to do that. We're willing to go knock on 500 doors for a whole day in the, in the 100 degree heat. We're also willing to go to houseless communities, talk to anybody and everybody and I think the best, best thing about Peace Corps is we're, we're willing to do it. One of the, the large communities we're serving is the houseless communities where a lot of outreach hasn't been done. They don't often know about events going on or they can't leave their locations very easily and there's just a lot of barriers up. So we're just trying to eliminate a lot of those barriers. In the middle of June, we had an event for Pride. It was a Pride vaccination event. We showed up, they said they weren't expecting that many people and we were also doing this in conjunction with this organization that, was, that had also done research on neighboring houses, communities that we could potentially go to and get the word out that they could come to this event. The vaccination crew that was there said, better yet, we can, we can send a nurse with you. And there was this one nurse, Chris, fantastic. This guy was, he was, it was like a, he was one of us, but was actually an RN that could like do shots. We got five vaccines. He went with one other person from the register. We went to the first houses community that was nearest by to the event. Peace Corps volunteers in groups of two or three would we'd be going from tent to tent, talking to people, answering questions, just letting them know that there's this is a per, you have the opportunity right now to get it. Well, they will. The nurse will come to you within five minutes. We already got three people vaccinated, and then we go to another place. We get two more, and there's like three more people that also want it there. So we go back and get 15 more vaccines, go back, hit another couple of houses, communities, and there's people coming left and right, just like willing to do it. They came by and offered to help me with the vaccinations. Cause I just, it's hard to get out to get to the doctors when you're not feeling good and it's hot and getting around. So it's really nice they showed up and talked to me about it and discussed all the options. You know, you guys brought the vaccine to me and. I could just get the shot right here and then go rest. I didn't expect that much help, but that's nice. It's really nice you guys came all this way and helped us. As you see, we're a little overwhelmed, a lot of homeless, a lot of poor. It's been hard, but you know, I'm grateful that we got the chance to get the shots because if you guys hadn't shown up, a lot of us wouldn't have got it. You know, it's been difficult. Even just walking away from your trailer or your tent, you're worried about getting robbed. So going to the doctor's office, you really have to really want to go. It's not fun. That was something that worked and that the best, best days of Peace Corps so far. So as a volunteer, I don't do anything on the clinical side. Some days, depending on what the mobile unit needs, we might be doing traffic control, we might be helping with logistics, so that might be actually getting folks in, getting them registered in the state's registry so that they can get their vaccination shot. It's also giving information to folks. Sometimes people just have questions. They may want to speak to one of the nurses we have at the unit. We're also actually physically filling out their CDC cards and then speaking to them too. I am a part of a a community outreach team for vaccination efforts and what we've been doing is trying to help boost the vaccination efforts among the different communities here in Illinois especially among groups of people that might have more difficult access to the vaccine and trying to bridge that gap. We've been working with the local health department in some of the counties that we've been working with and getting a little bit more statistics and understanding of where the need is, where do they need the help, who are the undervaccinated, and what are the reasons for hesitancy. And my partner and I have been focusing especially on uh, reaching out to different community organizations and faith-based organizations and trying to tap into their communities to see how we could, could help them and those relationships have just become an entryway into the community and just seeing how people here want to help their communities in varying, um, varying different kinds of communities, whether it be a Christian community, the African American community, the Latina community, all those different communities are wanting to help their people, especially since some of those people are the most under-vaccinated at this point. One of the relationships that we were able to foster in our time here is with a uh, pastor named Pastor Irene. She is with the Southside Community Center and she does a lot of amazing work within the community. Partnering with her, it was helpful to be able to get to know more people of the community from someone who's actively serving the community and understands the needs of the community and she really has a heart for the community. And so when we came, she was really happy because she wanted to be able to talk more about the vaccine and promote the vaccine and knowing that there are some 
really big barriers for why some African American people are not take, getting the vaccine. We actually helped her at a community event that she organized for Juneteenth and she had us there to be able to just sit and talk to people if they were hesitant and have conversations. There was a vaccination clinic at that event as well and so we were just there to be able to partner with her and to, to help reach that community. I may never know the extent of my impact here but just knowing that I am playing a role that if my talking to someone and addressing their hesitancy or encouraging someone gets one person vaccinated, that's one more person that can be spared. That's one family that can be protected. I myself didn't understand in the beginning is how big a barrier there is for some people to get vaccinated. Because people are always asking me, like, hasn't everyone who's wanted the vaccine got it already? But I've seen people coming in who are thrilled to get the vaccine, but because they work very long hours and they have language barriers that make it hard for them to access the vaccine, when they've received a phone call or seen a flyer about the clinic, it's really the first time they've felt welcome to come get vaccinated and comfortable getting vaccinated. In the Peace Corps, something that I was told a lot was, you know, don't be upset if you're, if you're not able to really see tangible results. And although it's still difficult here, uh, especially with what we primarily do right now with outreach. Right now we're very closely working along with one of the uh, FEMA trailers. Maybe a couple of weeks ago we left where we're doing some outreach and then for a couple of days we had to go and do other events and then we came back um, to do outreach for the trailer again and we visited the trailer at the end of it and when we were talking to the director he said you know anytime you guys are here we see more people showing up on days that you're here and it, it goes up by a significant amount. You know on the pandemic every vaccine, every shot that goes into an arm that, that may not have gone into an arm is an incredible contribution. And it really does require that we all step up and you know, do that kind of, of outreach and, and talking with people you know, in a very humble and respectful way. And you know, at the community level, understanding where people are coming from has been incredibly powerful. And the impact is that they've just been really dedicated partners for long term. There are a lot of people that are contributing and offering a hand to these CVCs and the outreach efforts, but not for this length of time. And even though it's just um, you know, a three month assignment, which doesn't seem very long, the fact that FEMA had these dedicated volunteers that were really contributing as partners in the process, it's, I, I don't know how you can measure that impact. There is no assignment too small. I know Peace Corps, we're, we're used to being abroad in different countries and the scope of work is a bit different. And yes, we're here domestically and the situation is quite different. We may not have traveled across the whole globe, but this assignment is just as important as international service. The work that we're doing is just as important. Every person that has been working at a vaccine center, every person that has been visiting a community or a local health department or a community organization, all of that is just as important as the work we do overseas. What we've seen is that the skills that, that volunteers learn during service are applicable here in the United States, um, and they can be translated very well overseas. So we do plan to go back out into communities around the world just as soon as it's safe to do so, and to support their COVID vaccination efforts or COVID recovery efforts, you know, in those countries, um, you know, as they as we are invited and based on the needs of that country. The um, unique opportunity that we got to serve and serve domestically, and just how it actually still relates. Like, you know, you can use those same skills of like integrating into a new community. We go into our countries of service with. Uh, hopefully full of knowledge and resources that we can give. Just as special as it is to be abroad serving, it's so special to be in your country and not too far from your home state, um, getting able to serve and still integrate into the community, meet people, make those connections, um, and at the end of the day, know that you are helping and being of service. Just raising an awareness about what Peace Corps is doing, what volunteers are doing, and just the importance of serving your community. Not everyone will probably go into this type of setting, but even like through school, even through maybe your, you know, college or your high school or something, learning about 
what community service is. Having the opportunity to serve your community, you know, is not only the Peace Corps, but all these different organizations has a different purpose of service. And you think about that in like the federal sector, public servants, public servants, and it's that word, it always comes back to service, service, your Peace Corps service. You know, just talking to other members of my team, it's very second nature to us to be able to go and serve. It's not something we consider something outside of, uh, of, of what we normally do. It is the thing that we do. Service is the thing that we do, and it's the thing that we love to do, and we love to do it well. It's a small thing, but it's, it's, it's huge. And we, sometimes when you're in the moment, it's hard for you to step outside of it and see it, but we'll see it soon. We'll, we'll see the impacts of this just kind of grow and expand like ripples in a pond. Just thank you. Thank you to the volunteers who served. Thank you for your service overseas. And thank you for stepping up again to support here at home. This is a historic time, both in the United States and around the world. And your willingness to show up again and to serve here in your own country is incredibly powerful. Thank you.